Hello all! As it is currently the holiday season, I decided to share with you this quick and fun way to make your own unique set of lino print holiday cards that you can then send to your friends, family or whomever else. Making these is something anyone can do regardless of artistic skill level, and you don't need a bunch of fancy equipment for these either. I make a different batch of cards every year, and they're typically very well received by the people I send them to. Also, these handmade cards will automatically be cooler than any kind of store-bought card you can get someone. Okay, before we start, just two tiny disclaimers. Firstly, I'm not a professional lino cut printmaker, so some things you might see on here might not be the most efficient way to do them, but they work for me, and if I can do it, so can you. And secondly, my filming setup consists of an antiquated iPhone attached to a stick, so the resolution and camera footage might not be the most amazing. The equipment you will need for this is typically found in a lino cut printing set, which should include the following things. Printing paint. I recommend getting a set of primary colors along with black and white, which should allow you to create most other colors by mixing. Then also a roller and a tray to hold your paint. And you will also need tracing paper as well as a paper to print onto. For that I recommend a specialized printing paper, but you can also use normal sketching paper as long as it is smooth and not too thick and absorbent. You will also need the lino blocks to carve into. These can be made from a variety of materials and personally I prefer the soft blue rubber ones which are also the cheapest. Lastly, you need a carving tool and some blades. While this might seem like a lot of material, these things can typically be bought as sets online with many costing no more than around 20 euros. The set I bought contained everything except for the tracing and printing paper. So let's actually get started, shall we? First, you need to choose what design you would like to create on your card. As we can see, that year I decided to go for a Christmassy catfish, so I took one of my older catfish illustrations and modified the design a bit. You can draw your own design if you want, but if you're not feeling confident in your artistic abilities, you can also use a pre-drawn design or a photo as a template. It's completely up to you. The design is ultimately what will be transferred onto the card, so be sure that it is the right size for the card you want to make. To transfer the design onto the lino, we start by using tracing paper. Put the paper on top of your design and then use a soft lead pencil, one that will transfer a lot of graphite, in my case I use a 6B, to trace your design using thick lines. Once you have finished tracing your designs, detach the tracing paper and place it onto the lino block so that the traced lines are touching the block. Then take a relatively blunt pencil and roughly draw over your lines again. This time it doesn't have to be especially neat, but you want to exert enough pressure so that your lines from the previous tracing will transfer onto the lino. Now that your design has been transferred, you are ready to start carving. For this stage, I recommend you start slowly with the most narrow blade. You can later decide if you want to keep that line width or use a wider blade. As you can see, I simply started by using the thinnest blade to trace my line art, as this is the style that I was initially going for. Just slowly push down and follow your lines. Remember, it's better to go slowly than to rush, as once you put a line down, it cannot be undone. At this stage, you can continuously modify the outlines of your design as you see me doing here with a pencil. At this stage, I had followed all my lines and decided to do a test print to see if I was satisfied with the current state of the design or whether it required some further modification. To start printing, add a few drops of ink into the tray and then roll over it multiple times with the roller. 
Here you can see I added a blue and a magenta drop to obtain a purple color. Keep spreading the paint until it has this relatively smooth, even texture, as you can see in the footage. If your paint is too dry and doesn't spread well, you can add a tiny drop of dishwashing liquid to it. Use the roller to spread the paint onto the lino. Then, take the lino and press it onto your printing paper. I like pressing down along the entirety of the back of the lino with my hand to make sure that the paint transfers onto the paper as best it can. Then, slowly peel off the lino from the paper. If you are slow enough, you can peek at your print and if you notice that a corner hasn't transferred properly, you can carefully press the lino down again and continue. As you can see, my first print is not so great. I think it's because I didn't apply enough paint and pressure to the lino. Some people actually make their paper damp before printing, but I prefer to print dry. It might take a few test prints before you find the correct ink consistency and pressure to apply for a good print. After this print, I decided my design was still too bland, so I washed the ink off the lino with soapy water and continued carving. I decided it would look cooler if I removed the background from the piece entirely and made the underbelly of the catfish white as well. To create white spaces, you need to completely carve out the lino in the area. It's a bit like a negative version of a photograph. The lightest areas are the ones with the most lines, while the darkest areas are the ones you leave alone. I did another test print, but still wasn't satisfied with the white of the catfish belly and the bits of background that I hadn't properly removed, so I kept going. I think the cut underwent a few rounds of test prints before I was finally satisfied with the design. What you see right here is the ideal consistency of the paint to use before printing. After a few rounds of minor revisions, I finally produced a print that I was satisfied with. And once you reach that stage, the mass production can begin. This is the part that is more fun if you actually recruit some friends or family members to help you. It is at this stage where you can experiment with different kinds of colors and papers. In this case, I would either print the catfish design directly onto the card paper if it was solid enough, or I printed it onto the specialized printing paper and then cut it out and glued it onto my card as the paper was too thin. As you can see, I used a wide variety of colors and papers, including newspapers, which in my opinion seem to absorb paint quite well. I like making batches of different colors and then sending different versions of the design to members of my family or friends who know each other, so in case they compare their cards, they can see that they all got different versions, which I think is super cool. And even if they're all the same color, every piece will still be a uniquely handmade item. In the end, I also ended up using different methods to apply pressure to get the ink onto my paper. The tissue method seemed to work especially well for the thin printing paper. So there you have it. This is how I make my holiday cards every year. And now you can make your own. If you give it a go, let me know how it goes. I hope you will also enjoy the process of making them. And um, I hope you enjoy the video. Goodbye.